So today, this is a bit of a PSA video. This is just a video where I'm just going to be talking for a little bit. Not about any basketball news. Yeah, Bledsoe's traded to Clippers. Does that mean the Clippers think they've got no chance? I don't know. I know, I got no idea. Is Bledsoe better than Patrick Beverly as an individual basketball player? Yes, is he a better fit? Probably not. Look, Bledsoe's been pretty bad in the... How many? In the two playoffs he's been in. Like, you never know. He's a decent player. He could come good. But look, it is what it is. This video is about this guy right here. This guy right here is the most disrespected player in the NBA right now. And I was about to say, I don't know why, but I do know why. I do know why. Because the vast majority of NBA Twitter and NBA viewers have never and will never play any sport on a winning team. And it doesn't matter what level. If you've ever, anyone who's ever won anything knows exactly why this guy is on the team. They know exactly why this guy is on the team. And it's not to play basketball. It is not to play basketball. Because in reality, he doesn't need to play. But he needs to be ready to play. You obviously can't replace him with someone who can't play basketball because he's got to be ready. He's got to be ready. If his number is called, he's got to be ready. But, yeah. Um, it's a role that not a lot of people are able to do. Especially at the NBA level. I'm going to explain it a little bit later. But, on, and again, at any level, it's a difficult role to play. His role. But, for anyone saying that Jared Dudley's a bum. Jared Dudley. People are saying, oh, he, he only averaged whatever seven points a game in his career. That doesn't matter. He still played 23 minutes a game for a Phoenix Suns team in a Western Conference Finals. Like, he still played for, like, if they didn't choke, well, to be fair, he was only playing nine minutes a game for that Clippers team, played 18 minutes a game for the Milwaukee Bucks in 2015, and in Brooklyn in 2020, or say 2019, he played 20 minutes a game. Like, if you're looking at his NBA career, the guy was a frequent starter for the Brooklyn Nets the year before he went to... Um, LA. He started for the Wizards in 15-16. Or he started half his game for the Wizards. He started a few games for Milwaukee in 14-15. Started half the games for the Clippers in 13-14. And that 13-14 Clippers team was really good, by the way. Like, that was Lob City at its peak. Like, that 13-14 and 14-15, they were the two best seasons for the LA Clippers. And he started 50% of the games. He started 60 games for the Phoenix Suns in 2012. 50 games in 2013. There were two quite bad seasons. Either way, though, none of that really matters. None of that really matters at the end of the day. His career high in points is 12.7 for a bad Phoenix. Well, I think they were an all right Phoenix Suns team, I guess. Um, last year, Steve Nash, but that doesn't matter. That does not matter because right now, what he's done in the past does not matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. He's on the team for a bunch of reasons. So, you can see, um, you can just see the impact he's made. So again, um, for the Brooklyn Nets back in 2019, they go and lose eight games in a row. So what does Jared Dudley do? Jared Dudley has uh, gets a team meeting, gets all the players together, has a team meeting. For somebody who's uh, apparently has no role and should not be in the NBA, I mean, it sure as hell changed a lot of things um, for the outcome of that team. That was a complete turnaround for the Brooklyn Nets. He had a whole team meeting, and if that team didn't turn around, if that team didn't have a big turnaround at the end of the 2019 season, there's no guarantee that uh, Kyrie and KD go to the Nets. If the Nets were as bad as they were expected to be that season, they didn't have the big D'Lo turnaround, they didn't have the big turnaround D'Lo All-Star year, they may not... They may not have ended up in the Nets. They might have ended up on the Knicks. And there's other things. I can see it right here. So Kyle Kuzma says Jared Dudley was the best teammate. And that's the thing. Is that I can guarantee you. You're getting that talk from a lot of Lakers players. Because he's coming back. They're co He's coming back. Jared Dudley was the guy who recruited Dwight Howard to come back. Was it LeBron? Was the reason why he came there because of LeBron and AD? Maybe. Like at the end of the day. You're not joining, you're not joining a team because of Jared Dudley. But he definitely helped recruiting. Just like back in... Like, it's not always the star players that recruit. It can be a Jared Dudley. It can be a Jared Dudley recruiting 
guys because again he's clearly respected he is respected by the younger players and i get it kyle kuzma is a little bit older but he's expected by the kind of less he's respected by the less experienced players as a veteran leader and also respected by the veterans as well he's just an unbelievable locker room presence and people don't understand how hard it is to do this role because first of all you've got to accept the role you've got to know what your role is and accept the role there are very few guys that can play this role as well as Jared Dudley. As you can even see it here. He knows exactly what his role is. We can only play 8 to 10 guys on consistent basis. So at 11 to 15, you're not going to play. You're going to be a practice guy. You're not going to hear me complain to the coach um, about that. He already has to worry about 9 or 10 personalities. And that's the thing. Especially the higher level you go in basketball, the harder it is to find somebody that not only... Again, Jared Dudley, if, he needs, if you need to play Jared Dudley, he can play. Like, he's fine. But the harder it is to find somebody who's going to be perfectly okay with working their ass off in practice, being a leader off the floor, and also being cool with being iced eight games out of ten. Like, that's a hard thing. And at any, at any level, it's hard. At any level, it's hard. Like, sitting on the last guy at a... Being the last guy at the end of the bench is an unbelievably difficult thing because all you want to do is play. Like, let's be real, anyone who's, um, like, we, we can all look at it and say, oh, yeah, I'd love to sit on the end of the bench and not play. But, I mean, we're not, we're not NBA-level players. We just love to be in the NBA and just sit there and not play. But, like, to make the NBA, you've, basketball's got to be your, pretty much your life, your whole life. If you don't have the confidence that you're one of the best players in the world, you're never going to make the NBA. So, imagine having that confidence to make the NBA, being a consistent NBA player. Starting on a playoff team and then accepting a role to not play basketball and just be just kind of a glue guy, be there just to help out the team. It says here, you have a guy like LeBron. Certain people are intimidated him when it comes to coaching staff, the ownership, the players, what to say, what not to say. When we watch film and the coaches are talking about film, there's at least two to three times every film session I will call somebody out from what they've done wrong because I want everybody to know our goal is a championship. Again, this is one of the hardest things to do have the balls to stand up to superstars like you might be saying oh he's just taking a spot from a young player not a young player a young if, if a young player had his spot they would not like there's no point having a young player as the 15th man on the end of the bench if you've got a young player looking to develop them and they're not going to get any burn send them to the g league because they're going to improve there the 15th man is not going to improve as a basketball player there's no point having a young player as a 15th man um because they're just not going to play. If you have a young player sitting on, sitting there on their ass, not playing, they're never going to get better at basketball. Send them down to the G League, get them in at a lower level, heck, ship them off to Europe for a year. But they'll be a lot. That's a lot better option than sitting them on the end of the bench. But that's the thing. That's the thing that people do not understand: the role that he brings. Every day in practice, he's got to show up, work his ass off. And is it the most difficult thing in the world? If you've, again, if you're looking from our seat, we could say, oh, this is an unbelievably good role. This is an unbelievably good role. But at the end of the day, why do players, why is it that the players constantly work out, constantly work harder, hard in the summer? So that they get better for the next season. But you've got a guy who knows he's not going to play that's still working that hard. Like, the reason why players bust their ass in practice, the reason why players bust their ass in off-season workouts is so that they can play and help their team. This guy does it anyway. This guy just does it to help his team without knowing that he's going to play. It is one of the most difficult roles, and there's a reason why. There's a reason why when the Lakers had everyone, we're getting all these players, they were like, who are the Lakers going to fill it out? Well, it's a guarantee Jared Dudley's the last spot in the roster. For the Miami Heat, literally, Udonis Haslam can play as long as he wants. He can play as long as he wants because these guys are really hard to come by. They are so, like, there are a couple of them in the NBA. But NBA fans that have never, not only not played basketball at any sort of a high level, have never won at any sport at any sort of decent level in their lives, are every time there's a player like Isaiah Thomas. What Isaiah Thomas brings to a team, most teams, nothing. He brings absolutely, he can't, the problem is, is that like, when you've got your like star players, you've got your like glue guys, 
And then everyone's gonna have a role. If you carve out a role for yourself at any sport, you can be like irreplaceable. And Jared Dudley is irreplaceable. Like the reason why he's only getting paid a couple of million is because his role is of importance, but it's not quite as important to some quite as important as someone who's gonna make an impact on the floor. But it's still extremely important. And he's perfected his role. He's one of the best at his role. And that's the thing people don't realize. Is that, yeah, there are stars for every NBA team has their stars. But once you go past their st- your stars, there are just roles. You got your shooters, you got your defenders, you got your rebounders, you got your guys to come in and just cause havoc. You remember there were years where Ronnie Toriaf, he was just running around diving on every loose ball. And, and there's the Patrick Beverly role where sometimes he's not needed, but he's just there to be a nuisance on defense. Jared Dudley's role is to be a great locker room guy, is to help improve the team off the floor. It's to help their young players improve, as well as being kind of a middleman between the young players and the older players. And that's the reason why, especially for this Lakers team, especially for a Lakers team where you've got the likes of LeBron, you've got AD, you've got guys like Dwight who have been there and done that. And you've got a lot of younger players now like Kendrick Nunn, Malik Monk, who have not yet played well Kendrick Nome's obviously Miami I think he'll fit in seamlessly to any sort of culture but and guys like Malik Monk who haven't played with a star like LeBron where their primary point of contact if they're looking to even talk to the vets on the team is probably Jared Dudley there are 28 teams in the NBA where he's probably not that needed but the Lakers sure as hell are a much better team than without him so all of you guys saying that Isaiah Thomas needs needs to take the roster spot instead of this guy. You honestly, you're forming a 2K roster, not a basketball team. Anyone who's saying Leangelo needs to be in over this guy. Uh, you're, you're not forming a basketball team. There is no singular player in the world that you can get for his money that will make the Lakers better than the current than having him there because yeah obviously if you're adding a star in yeah you'd rather have him over Jared Dudley most of the time but again the 15th man the role that he exa- he knows he knows exactly what his role is he knows what he has to do and you know what chemistry is a big thing and he's he's helping for that a lot so again could he be could he be equally as effective as an assistant coach? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because it's a little bit different. Because when a coach is kind of the middleman between the players and the middleman between the players and the staff, it becomes a little bit awkward. But when it's a player, someone who's practicing day in, day out, who's at every single workout working out with you, who you can see working their ass off, trying to get you to work hard as well, it's a little bit different. And I think as long as Jared Dudley. As long as Jared Dudley's able to practice at an NBA level, I think he has a spot and he has a role in the league. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.